Welcome back to Okie Dokie Dokie Artichoke. Part five? I don't remember where we're at now. Five? I think it's about five. Yeah. Are we're we on five. five. Yep. Okay. And if I'm not future me, you can just correct me. But if I'm not, don't correct me. There you go. See, there, there, that's how you do it. I'm crazed. Uh, I'm Witchley. And we are playing some more. So let, we stopped when we showed the our second poem to Yuri because we favor her yes. in every sense of the word. So, uh, but we're going to show it to the rest. So say Yuri. Say Yuri. Let's see if I can remember her voice. You were like so like giddy, like Ooh. Oh, <laughs> I like this one, Grumbly. It has some nice feelings in it. Ah, I'm glad. Does that mean it's better than yesterday's? Let me think. I don't know. I guess I like them both. <laughs> That's not very helpful, you know. Well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad. But that's why I just go to my heart. Go by my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure that's exactly how it works. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah! Me neither. <laughs> Ugh. Why do you why do you at least try giving like it some thought? Why don't you at least try giving it some thoughts? Or some thought. Aw, you want to write something for me? That's so sweet. Yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you mind up you might end up getting hurt at some point. Uh, well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep it in mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm. I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems too. Sometimes a little bit of both. There's always a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet! Yeah! I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad? I can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. Well, I like happy the most. But sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad poem can help give the rain cloud a little hug. And make a nice, happy rainbow. Sayori, that's unexpectedly poetic. It is. Uh, it is? Maybe I'm getting better ex at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Grimblade. I should go write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? Do you want me to read this? Yeah. Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. Well, we're off to a great start. <laughs> it's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine, all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. Sorry, that's Lucy. She's just so excited. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in in a bottle to keep it safe. What? Oh. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all of the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and bottles. All in a row. My collection makes me lo lots of friends. Each bottle of starlight to, to make amends. Sometimes my friends feel a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper, my fingers go. Like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding it in, in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty bottle, my empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all done. I open and and, and in come my friends. And they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frank, I frantically pull them from the shelf. 
one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts on shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Holy crap. Ah, it's very deep. Ah. Holy, yeah, holy crap indeed, Grumboid. It's like he's reading my thoughts. Yeah. Sayori, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? She uh, didn't. She delivered. Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm used to you being cheerful? Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Ah, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah! Writing is the best! I'm gonna keep writing until I die! Huh, okay. Uh -huh, don't get ahead of yourself. Sarah's had a bit of uh, had always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes make it hard for me to be pessimistic. Who should but who should I show my poem to next? Let's leave Monica last. I always okay. think not Monica the nice last. Uh, she is like the president. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, I can't admit that it's better than the last one. Well, I mean, I can't admit that. I mean, it's nice to see that you're putting in some effort. That's good. But I still don't like th like this at all. It's trying too hard to be serious. Eh? What do you mean by that? Poems don't need to be all deep sounding to express something. It's going to just sound like you're forcing it unless you really don't suck at it. Honestly, don't bother trying to write poems like this until you're on Yuri's level. Natsuki stopped short all of a sudden. Don't, don't tell me. Eh. Uh, eh? You're, you're not just trying to impress Yuri, are you? What? What are you talking about? And keep your voice down. You know Yuri would love this kind of, this angsty. Just be oh wait, just because she's a talented writer doesn't mean I I, I mean <sighs> Looks like I'm in trouble. Indeed. I somehow st struck a nerve. Though what what I did is beyond me. I am so done with you. Natsuki shoves the poem I handed her back over to me. Oh, I think she's figured me out. Um. Take your stupid poem if you wrote it for someone else. Just don't show it to me. Damn. Ouch. This is, this is what I get for le letting a young girl step into my business. Unless I, I, I was a mind reader, I was destined to be in a world of pain from the start. At least Natsuki wasn't really the girl I was trying to impress in the first place. Well, we close that bridge. All right, so Monica. we don't even get to see her poem? No, she was pissed off. Shit, okay. Mm -hmm. I wonder if we... I want to know how we can approach it differently. It's going to be nice how we can do that in right. the future. So. I hear it's really replayable. I am interested. And if you guys are too, please leave it in the comments. Hi again, Grumboid. How's the writing going? All right, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that one. You never know. 
want to share what you wrote for today? Sure. Here you go. I give my poem to Monica. All right. This one's good. But you didn't even process. That's, That's up to you, Dad. No! Don't take that away from... Don't take this away. Please. Okay. It feels like you're not only getting more comfortable with your style, but the imagery is better than the last one I read. Just wondering, processing, but have you been finding inspiration in Yuri's writing style? Hmm, I guess so. You can't deny that she's talented. Yeah, totally. I think her poems are the most romantic. I'm sorry, what? Romantic? Monica's lost it too. All these girls have lost There's it. Some, I could see why she would say romantic. That's the best way to describe it. She's like a totally different person when she picks up a pen. I noticed that too. Or when she's talking about literature. It's like a light turns on inside of her. Mm -hmm. Sadly, it's hard to get much personal conversation out of her. Trust me, I've tried. Who knows what goes on in that head of hers? I hope you don't mean that in a bad way. No, of course not. I just meant that I wish she didn't keep so much to herself. Processing. But still defending her like that. You must be pretty into her. Is it really this noticeable though? Yes. But, okay. Second poem that's really her style. <laughs> eh? You completely misunderstood. Ah ha ha. Calm down. I'm kidding. Processing. Besides, I'm pretty sure she's already got a boyfriend. What? Who said that? Did you hear that? Did you did you hear? Did she say something? Wait, really? Yeah, a fictional one, anyway. Oh, oh, phew. Monica kind of whispers that last part to me. It's just a hunch, but well, there's not really anything wrong with that. Oh, well, I know. I was just saying, processing. But anyway. You want to read my poem now? Sure! <laughs> I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. Do you want to read this one or you want me to? You can read it if you want. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing, red, green, blue, an endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms, squeaking, screeching, piercing, sine, cosine, tangent. Oh my god, she's a robot. <laughs> like playing a chalkboard Error. on a turntable. Error. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless. Honey, the last words say low to me. Holy oh, shit, she is a robot. Did we just fucking, like, foreshadow this? Holy oh, shit. We might have. Hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? Air. Ah ha ha. I guess it's just the way I wrote. I'm sorry if you don't like it. Error. No, I never said that. It's just a kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. Hey. <clears throat> Sorry. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. Did you say poem? Yep. <laughs> it's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. Of my inner gears. <laughs> it's still hard for me to tell what's what's it about though 
Ah ha ha. Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling. That's one way to get out of a conversation, Monica. <laughs> Processing. <laughs> or a conversation with a reader. See, there you go. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. I don't know. Maybe there is. So these girls, like, they're Oh, really... yeah, these girls definitely have uh, deeper meanings in their poems. They li- haven't fully figured out yet. They're literally bleeding onto the page. It's pretty much what writing is. I mean, you're, 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 you, were a, you are a writer. You've written books. So, I mean, you kind of feel that way, right? Yes. Have you ever <laughs> put in any of your emotions into the books like that before? Yeah. Your books? Yes. Well, then this is right up your alley. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. Oh, shit. Okay. Sorry. Let me just save the game real quick. It's just telling me to save. Okay, we're good. Sorry. Great tip, Monica. Keep going. You never know when you might change your mind. Shit, can I look back? I just, I just, I don't like this. <laughs> <laughs> or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? I don't know. I think she's just giving us a tutorial tip. What am I even talking about? Ah ha ha. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Oh my god, she's a... down. <laughs> Restart. Okay, <everyone>. Power up. <laughs> <laughs> We're all done reading each other's poems. Right. I have something extra planned today, so no powering down now. If everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh. Do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we could we could put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Sayori has been working on posters, and I've designed some pamphlets that can give out during the event. (laughs) Okay, that's great and all. But that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, sorry. I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? P. <laughs> um, Monica. Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Sayori's putting it all in processing. <laughs> Sayori's putting it on all the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Sayori, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't you didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Eh, well, I did. Do you really think it's a bad uh, bad idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea. But I didn't set up for this, you know. There is no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. Uh, I agree with Natsuki. I could never, in my life, do something like that. Imagining, Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. 
guys. No, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Jiri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. Monica is not thinking straight. <laughs> Jesus. Or, or it was uh, Sayori, I don't know. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So, I'm sorry. But, I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. Why is she pointing at her eyebrow? Pog must feel what eyeball feels like. Processing. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah! It's about expressing your feelings! Being intimate with yourself! Finding new horizons and having fun! That's right. And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem. Then I know you can do it. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Siori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Siori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Uh, okay, fine. Guess I'll just have to get it, get, get it over with. Oh, right! Phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What are you... Processing. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expected faces. <sighs> I guess I don't really have a choice. Ah ha ha, that's everyone! You're the best, Yuri! This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway. Let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. No, no way! Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? Ah ha ha. Of course. Now, let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Uh -huh. My Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Uh -huh. <laughs> is this something she's done before? Or she's just simply a natural? 
processing. <laughs> I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the rec rec recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That... that was so good, Monica! Ah ha ha. Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? Uh, I'll go next. Ah! Yuri's fired up all of a sudden! Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You, oh, it's you, you can do it, Yuri! It, it's called After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a, just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into a sharp syllables of, of, fierce, of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns, and it's structure that she enunciates uh, with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside of her head. Suddenly she finishes. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her, as if she's bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save this situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterward, and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not what we didn't want... To... It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were so caught off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back into her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay! I guess I'm next then! Sayori so hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Ah! <laughs> Sorry, giggled. <laughs> Sayori. It's a lot harder than I thought. Why did you guys do it so easily? Ah. Try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Just imagine people in everyone's underwear. Or I mean, I'm doing that right now. they're robotic. <laughs> <laughs> Undercarnage. Undergarments? Is that what you just said? <laughs> yes. Perfect. I was gonna say robotic skeleton, but... Robotic I skeleton. I robotic like... undergarments is funnier. Robotic garments. Robotic garments. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself. Like in front of a mirror. Or in your own head. It's your poem. So it'll come out the best that way. I see. I see. Okay then. Siori begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. You know, happy and sad. Right. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes, and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori! <laughs> Even Grumboard liked it! I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Eh? I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery 
wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's, well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. <laughs> then next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay! Now, who's next? It's either me or Natsuki. Natsuki. Hmm. Don't make me go before Grumboid. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Grumboid lower everyone's standards a little bit before I have to do it. Natsuki. It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that will improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. Alright then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called... It's called... Why are you all looking at me? Because... You're presenting. Humph! <clears throat> anyway, the poem is called Jump. From Van Halen? Jump! Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Natsuki takes a breath. Once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken out loud. Or aloud, sorry. The words feel like they bounce up and down, as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You'd better not make me do that again. Ah, uh, well. Do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean... Doing it for other people will be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the... Uh, I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case... You won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival. Okay, I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez. I should probably find some other poems to recite instead. That's fine, too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Ah, uh, yeah. No problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, 
and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait! I can do this. I can do this. All right. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club, and impressing Monica, then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? That was me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yep. yep. <laughs> Look uh, at you two, always going to home, home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. it. Must be a little nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Grimboid. You don't have to say it. Whatever. Let's go already. Ooh, what a day. I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori? Sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... I, I mean... Sayori fumbles with her words. So, let's just say that one day... Yuri asked to walk home with you. Huh? Did she say something? <laughs> what would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> uh, oh god. Uh, so, do we want to just break well, Sayori's feelings and say we would do with we would walk home with Yuri instead? Or I would still walk home with Sayori? Like, genuinely. If Yuri asked you to walk home with her, what would you do? I would walk. Oh, and then tell Sayuri that she's your friend. Okay. Walking home with Yuri, huh? Why does the thought of that make my heart pound? I mean, given how hard it is for her to socialize, I would feel awful turning her down, so... Isn't she so beautiful and smart? That has nothing to do with, with what I just said. <laughs> you admitted it! Jeez. There's not even any point in speculation, speculating something that's never going to happen. Well, maybe. But I just like to think about it. It's not long before you won't need me anymore, you know? Need you? Sayori. I can't figure out why you're seeing things in your head. How? You're how you're seeing things in your head right now. Sorry. Everyone is different. Nobody in the club is a replacement for you. Hmm. If you say so. The conversation trails off, and I'm left feeling uh, feeling awkward. But it was kind of her fault for trapping me with such a weird question. I can't just lie to her. But if there's something that makes makes her happy, I would hate to take that away from her. That's why I said there's no point in speculating. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time. Time to write another poem. Well, that will have to be for the next episode. This one's a bit longer than our others, isn't it? Yeah, it was. But you know what? We were really interested into it, so. Yes, we had to get through this day. Yes, but thank you guys so much for watching. We're uh, getting ready for a third poem. And then apparently we have some big festival going on next. So prepare for that. Indeed. Mentally yes. and physically. Whatever, whatever floats your boat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, if you guys enjoyed this episode, please like and subscribe as it does help us out on the channel. It does. Until then, I'm Grumboy. I mean, I'm crazed. And uh, I am Witchy. Grumboy. <laughs>